Let's talk about Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager is an optional but potentially critical management and reporting component for Veeam Backup and Replication. As the name would imply, it allows you to federate all of the Veeam Backup servers within your enterprise into a single pane of glass that can be easily managed and monitored. It will allow you to restore VMs and search and restore indexed guest OS files in the current and archived backup state. One-click restores, VMs, and application items as well. It also allows you to enable encryption password loss protection, which is a way to decrypt previously encrypted data if the initial password for encrypting the data is lost or misplaced. Let's take a look at a demonstration of Backup Enterprise Manager now. The Enterprise Manager is a web portal. It lets us see what's happening through our Veeam Backup and Replication infrastructure. When you first log into the Enterprise Manager, you'll be directed to this dashboard page. The dashboard shows you a view into what's been happening over the last 24 hours. You can also select the view to look at the last seven days. Now, you'll notice that there is a summary pane right here. It's going to let us see the backup servers that this Enterprise Manager is connected to. You're able to federate and connect multiple backup servers to a single enterprise manager to provide the single pane of glass functionality for their management. You can see the jobs that are being run on their backup servers, the number of machines that are being protected. You get a little view into the processing speed and other data statistics, and also what's been happening over the last seven days and the status of the various jobs that the backup servers are managing and your licenses. From the Enterprise Manager, you're also able to generate reports. So we'll go in and we'll click on this backup server. We can view a report on one of our jobs. I'll click on this job right here, and there's the view into the job's history. We can export this out to Excel if we wanted to manipulate the data. Very handy little place to be able to do this. Now we're also able to do some job management options inside the Enterprise Manager. So if we take a look at one of our jobs here and just select the line, we're able to see that the last run of this job was successful. And if we go up to the top, we can actually execute the job right now. We can actually run it right from here. If it's currently running, we can stop it or retry it if it's failed. Also, we can do some things like edit jobs. So if I go into this particular job here, I can do some edit tasks. Now this isn't the full set that we're able to do from our backup and replication console, but it will let us do some job manipulation. So you can see some of the options that are available to me. We're also able to export this list if desired. Now we could choose to run an active full backup. We could disable the job, we could clone this job and maybe change some of the parameters to meet some of our other environmental criteria, or we could delete the job if we felt it needed to be removed. Now we can do full virtual machine recoveries from the Enterprise Manager. So if we select, maybe I wanna restore this Exchange server right here. Now I probably won't wanna pull it from the Quantum DXI, Maybe I want to pull it from my scale-out backup repository, but I can do the restores here choosing to overwrite or keep the existing virtual machine. If this is a replica, I could choose to run a failover plan. I could choose to delete this data as well, or I could even run a quick backup of this virtual machine right from the Enterprise Manager interface. We're able to do guest file recoveries from the Enterprise Manager. Now this is a very, very handy tool because you don't need to actually specify which machines this is coming from. Uh, let's say that you know of a specific file that exists. Let's do something that's a little broad here like uh, all .pdf files and just hit search. What this is going to do is it's going to search throughout our environment looking for any files with the extension .pdf and it'll take a few minutes to come back because there are probably multiple files with PDF attachments in my environment. But you'll notice I didn't have to say where it needed to have them come from. So you can see it found some backup jobs, some oversized VMs, some PDF files on this Exchange server and it continues to search. 
This is going to search across my VMware backups, my Hyper-V backups, backups that were created with Veeam agents are all able to be searched. The one thing that requires the search capability, which makes it so powerful, but it does mean that we have to have an index and that index is created by the backup job. If you take a look at a backup job here, in the guest processing options, there's the enable guest file system indexing. This option allows us to build an index in order to search across and between the system. So enabling this on certain jobs, but not on others, will allow you to decide which systems you're going to be able to search in the interface, of course, if you wanted to. If you wanted to do recovery from a specific system, you can, of course, choose which system. So maybe I want to do something from, let's say, I wanted to recover from this system right here. And I'll clear my PDF filter. I can just browse through. This does not require that the indexing be turned on if you want to browse. You do not need that index as part of the job. So maybe I'll go into this recovery folder here. Oh, there's nothing there. Uh, maybe some of it's in the data project folder. Oh, there's a North Sydney one. And we got some information about Shell Cove Milson Point here. Uh, PDF documents, very handy. These are the exact same, but it wasn't indexed when it was backed up. So that's the reason it didn't show up in the search. So very powerful tool to be able to do recoveries. When I select a file, I can choose to restore it, either overriding it or keeping the existing file. I can choose to download it to my web browser. Let's do that right now. If I wanted to, I could have chosen to add it to a particular list of files and then set and run that all in one batch. So it would have actually restored multiple files at a time. Now that restore is currently running, we'll let it run for a few minutes, won't take that long, while we continue to talk about some of the other recoveries that we can do. We're able to do recoveries of mailbox items. So maybe if we look up a specific user in here. Okay, let me see if I can find Taryn in here. Click search. And there we go. Now we can actually go through and restore items from this user's mailbox from a certain point in time. Maybe the most recent backup. We can choose what type of items we could restore only those items that were missing or were created at a certain moment in time. So if they don't exist in production, we're going to restore these items back. If I wanted to do this for this week, it's actually going to restore all those items that don't exist into the mailbox. Great feature. It will do this without me seeing what I'm restoring from the console, preserving my user's privacy. There's also request tabs. What the request tab does is it allows our users to come into Enterprise Manager and request access to an on-demand sandbox through the creation of that request. The request could say that uh, we want to have 120 minutes, a couple hours of time here, and I want it to be for my SharePoint application. I'm looking for the application group where the SharePoint server is, and I know my domain controller is in that application group, so I'll put my domain controller in there and search. I can choose the point in time I'm looking to restore to. Maybe I'll choose the most recent, and I can choose a Sure Backup job. This is the Sure Backup job that I wanted. So this allows me to create a request for an on-demand sandbox that's automatically going to power down after 120 minutes, provided that it's actually approved because there's an approval process built around all of this. Really nice. Let's click Cancel and exit out of this. Let's go into the configuration options. Backup servers. It allows me to connect my backup servers from when you first install backup and replication, you need to add your original backup server and any additional ones are in this interface. I do like to mention the licensing options down here are that the enterprise manager license will be pushed to any connected backup servers. So just to be aware, this is the enterprise manager license. It's the same license as for backup and replication. It just gets pushed out and you're able to see that and your instant license reports here as well. Now let's look at the vCenter servers. 
vCenter servers allows you to connect and deploy the plugin, which allows you to go into your vSphere clients, right click and choose to do some Veeam activities such as backup a virtual machine, use quick backup or Veeam zip. Self-service. This allows our users from our VMware environment to use the Enterprise Manager to do some of the job management capabilities. This is the VMware self-service portal that allows this capabilities. Search servers allow us to connect to a search service that's been deployed in our environment to provide the index capability in order to view and restore those virtual machines. Next, we're going to Sessions is a view into what's been happening in the Enterprise Manager. Roles allows us to create delegated users and give them certain accesses into Enterprise Manager. There's a separate video on recovery delegation that goes into this further. Now settings includes our connection to Active Directory, some chart settings, and session history. Notifications. This allows us to send off notifications to our selected users. You're able to select your SMTP server and port, and you can send job summary emails. This email will include a summary of all the jobs that are running across your backups environment, which means you get one email with all the results instead of having an email per job. You can also see lab requests, the restore operations, who's been doing what, license information, and information about the key management system. Key management is a way that Enterprise Manager will be able to help in the event that there's a problem with the encryption of certain backup files in a backup repository. For example, your backup server that contains these encryption keys is no longer available. So this provides the ability to get to that backed up data that's encrypted. There is additional information available around key management and encrypted data on the Enterprise Manager in another video. Finally, about. This gives us the information surrounding this particular deployment of the Enterprise Manager. It does give us a link into the RESTful API service, which can be used to pull the Enterprise Manager capabilities out of this portal and put into, for example, a service provider's portal, or maybe another website that we are also maintaining. This completes our demonstration of the Veeam Enterprise Manager. Additional how-to videos mentioned in this demonstration and others can be found under the Learn tab on Veeam.com. Thank you so much for watching.